we're going to calculate the stock price for Camping World. And we're going to do that by using prior financial information. First, we need the market cap, which is $1.869 billion. And then the stock price, 2118. Now we know how many shares are standing because it's just the market cap, 1.9 billion, divided by $21. And you have 88 million shares outstanding. Next, we need free cash flow. And the best way to find the value of a company is to forecast future free cash flow and discount those dollar amounts back to today's dollars. And that's what we're doing in this video today. Next in the model, we need net income. And we use four years of financial data for the model. And last is revenue. Now, if you, if you look at these numbers, they're all over the place. Free cash flow, it's positive one year, negative two years. So two out of the four years, they went through more cash than they brought in. So they had to go into debt for those two years. They had one year with negative net income. And uh, the revenue is pretty smooth, as it is with most companies. There was a, not much of a tick up in 2019. But let's let's move on. Next, next we need to look at the capital structure of Camping World and figure out the discount rate we need to apply to the future cash flows. So the interest expense, the interest they pay on their debt is 110 million. And let's see how much debt they have. So current debt, 862 million. And non-current debt, $1.2 billion. So they pay 5.3% interest on the debt, which is on the higher side. But interest payments are tax deductible, so let's find the effective tax rate. So this is why it's hard to, to use the income statement for forecasting. That's why we forecast free cash flows and not net income. Because, look at this, their income one year, they lost $90, $90 million one year, but they paid $30 million in taxes. That doesn't seem like it would make sense, right? If you lose money, you would think you wouldn't pay any taxes. And then the year before, that looks right. So the income statement used accrual accounting. So a lot of things on a certain year happened years ago. So, and there's depreciation in there, a lot of non-cash items. So it makes it really difficult to use for valuation purposes. But anyways, the effective tax rate is 32%. So the cost of the debt is 3.62%. And they have over half the capital structure's debt, which isn't so great. Um, you would think Marcus Limonis, the profit, would have a company with less debt, not as leveraged. But let's move on. We need to figure out the cost of equity, and we need a beta. Wow, 3.55. I think that's the biggest I've seen. That means it's really volatile of a stock, and it moves three and a half times the market. And that's, I think, the biggest cost of equity. But the more volatile your stock is, the more return you should expect to receive because it's that much riskier to buy this stock. So the cost of equity is 30%, where the cost of debt is only 3.6%. It's a big difference. Because the reason equity is more expensive than debt is because equity sits lower on the capital structure of a company. And in the event of a default, debt holders get paid before equity holders. And this number, 15.98%, 15, 15 is the price Camping World pays to obtain financing. So that's how much they need to generate each year in profit in order to add value to the investors. And if they aren't able to do that, 
for a number of years, they could go into bankruptcy. So this is the WAC, which is a blend of the cost, the debt and equity. So we have to use this as a discount for future cash flows. So we estimated the future cash flows for four years. Then we did a terminal value, which is all future cash flows after four years. Then we discounted back to today. And we come up with a, with a value of $2 billion for the company. And if you divide that by 88 million shares, the calculated stock price is really close to the actual stock price. According to the model, it's a buy. Not by much. 5% discount. So when I first built this discounted cash flow model, it wouldn't have been able to handle a company like this. Because generally, discounted cash flow models need financials that are consistent and uh, not many negatives. But I built in a lot of extra features because the more companies I looked at, the more difficult it was to value some of them. So I, I learned some of the nuances. So there's a lot of like, there's a lot of like if statements and uh, iterations in this model to take into account different things. So if you look at the historical price of the stock, it was trading around in the 20s for a while. So it's been trading at, at intrinsic value. But a stock can obviously trade a lot higher, a lot lower than what it's worth. This is trading where it's at. Um, and whenever you do research, you may find analysts talking about this company. Some will say this is a buy stock. Some will say it's a sell stock. But each, each analyst has their own model and their own assumptions and ideas on a company and on industry. But you never see that model. But this is my model and it's my opinion. And I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.